Thank you Empress 1908 Gin for sponsoring this episode. More on them later. Oh, hey, what's up my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about pre-batch cocktails and punches. Christmas is right around the corner and you're known to be that person who always makes some delicious cocktails for your friends and family gatherings. But this year you feel like you want to sit back, relax, enjoy your time while still having a delicious cocktail? Well, punches is the perfect way to do so. But there's a few details you don't want to miss if you want to make sure to succeed. So today we're going to talk about those and to demonstrate my points, we're going to make an original punch of mine that I like to call the flower in the snow. So if you guys are ready, let's do it. Okay, so today we're going to make a punch recipe and we're going to talk about how to pre-batch it correctly. But just to be clear, not all pre-batch cocktails are punches. So what exactly is a punch? Well, that's a question that would be actually quite long to answer because it has a very rich history and it's quite complex. But today, since I want to concentrate on how to pre-batch punches, I don't want to go through all the details and history. But to make a long story short, punches are usually large cocktails made out of spirit, sugar, citrus, spices, and water. And the latter is what I believe separates the traditional cocktails from the punches. Usually when we talk about water in cocktails, it's the dilution that's added by the stirring or shaking process. But here in punches, it's different. It's an extra amount of water that we add to stretch the recipe. And most of the time, it's in the form of tea. So it is very important to keep that in mind when you want to create your own recipe of punch. It's not just taking a cocktail and upscaling it to a larger batch. That being said, now that we know that all pre-batch cocktails are not punches, all pre-batch cocktails, including punches, need to follow some rules to be a success. And here's what I believe is the most important. If you want to make a cocktail ahead of time, regardless of what it is, you need to understand and control oxidization. And if you want to make punches, you've got to use citruses because it's part of the DNA of punches. But there's one big problem with those. As soon as the flesh or the juice get in contact with air, it will start to oxidize. If you don't know what that means, well, just think of rust. Your citrus will start to taste rusty. And I don't have to tell you that this is no good. And the more oxidized it gets, meaning the more in advance you prep your punch, the more rusty it's gonna taste. But don't worry, we have some ways to avoid that. The first option is very simple. You simply pre-batch your punch without the citruses and store that in the fridge. This will stay good for weeks. Then whenever you're ready to serve your punch, you juice your citrus, throw that in there, give it a little stir, and you're good to go. This will solve your problem of oxidization perfectly, but there's one downside. It's not all prepped ahead of time. So if you really want to prep your cocktail and not think about it anymore until it's time to serve it, there's two more options. First one, to milk wash your cocktail. That means that you're going to clarify your cocktail using the milk washing technique. This is very interesting and I've done that several times on the channel. If you want to learn more about this technique, I'm going to link some videos up here. There's one very important thing you have to keep in mind when you do that. You change a lot the flavor of the cocktail. And sometimes it just doesn't do justice to the drink. So if you want to give it a try before in a smaller quantity, I would highly recommend that. And if you like the result, well, then you just scale it up to a larger batch of clarifying milk punch. And this technique will extend the shelf life of your cocktail by a lot. And I'm talking about months, sometimes even years. So there's definitely some upside to this technique. Lastly, what we're going to do today is what I believe to be the perfect balance between the two techniques, because we're not going to change the flavor of the end result. We're going to extend the shelf life quite considerably, and we're going to prep it all ahead of time. To make it happen, we're going to make a special cordial using different techniques to keep the flavor as close as possible to the real juice and to reduce the oxidization to a maximum. The flavors of our cordial today will be lemon, ginger, and hibiscus flowers. You can use this technique with a lot of different flavors, and I'm going to tell you how later, but now Let's start with this recipe. What you're gonna need is first, in a small jar, you're gonna add seven grams of lemon peels and two grams of finely chopped ginger. To that, you're gonna add seven grams of citric acid, give it a little shake to make sure to quote all the ingredients with the powder. And then to that, you're gonna add 85 grams of granulated sugar. Then you're gonna close the lid and let that rest at room temperature for 12 hours. From time to time, you can give it a little shake, but if you do so, make sure that the lemons or the ginger do not stick out from the powder. And if so, well, just put them back in. 
After making some tests, I realized that when I was adding the citric acid first and then the sugar, I was getting a better flavor extraction. I don't know if there's a science behind this, if the citric acid has a stronger power of extraction. All I know is it was working better and I was getting bolder flavors. Now, if you want to make a cordial using the same method but with different ingredients, you can totally do it. And it's actually quite simple. What we did here is we extracted the flavors in the natural oils of the lemon peels and the ginger with two different methods together. The oleosaccharum is when you do it with raw sugar and the oleocitrate when you do it with acid. So if you want to do that with different flavors, just keep in mind to use some ingredients that has a lot of natural oils. Great examples for that. Pretty much all citrus peels are great for this. Herbs, banana peels or pineapple also work really well with this method. Also, before going any further, I would like to point out that the recipe I'm giving you today is for approximately five servings. I know it's not a lot for a punch recipe, but I don't have a big party coming up and I didn't want to make too much. But obviously, if you want to make a large punch bowl, you simply scale up the ingredients following the same ratios and the infusion time will remain the same. Now we're going to set that aside for the moment because we need some hibiscus flour infusion to transform our powder into a cordial. To do it, we're going to start in a bowl with 12.5 grams of dried hibiscus flowers, to which we're going to add 200 grams of hot water. We're going to stir a little bit and let that infuse until it reaches back room temperature. And then we're going to remove the flowers with a fine mesh strainer. Make sure to press on the flowers to extract as much flavors and liquid as possible. And when you're done, you're going to reweight the liquid to keep and save 150 grams of the infusion. Then you're going to add the infusion to your powder mix and stir or shake until the powder has completely dissolved. Once you're done, you're going to throw this all in a blender and blend at high speed for about 30 seconds. Then we simply filter this through a nut milk bag, set it aside and move on to the next and final step before making the punch. So it is now time to make our water and we're going to flavor it with green cardamom seeds and Earl Grey tea. First, in a mortar and pestle, you're going to lightly crack 2.2 grams of green cardamom seeds and add that to a bowl. Then you're going to add 3 grams of Earl Grey tea. To that, you're going to add 250 grams of hot water and let that infuse until it reaches back room temperature. Once you're there, you're going to filter your infusion, again by pressing on the leaves to extract as much liquid and flavor as possible. And you're going to wait to save 225 grams of the liquid. So that seals the deal for the mise en place, we're ready to make the punch. So what you're gonna need is Empress 1908 Gin, Elderflower Liqueur, your Hibiscus Lemon and Ginger Cordial, your Cardamom and Earl Grey Tea Infusion, and the final touch, a little bit of Orange Blossom Water. I created this punch recipe to highlight the flavor profile of Empress 1908 Gin, which is the sponsor of today's episode. So before we mix the punch, let's take just one moment to talk about this beautiful gin. Empress is a small batch copper pot steel gin distilled in Victoria, BC in Canada. It's made out of eight different botanicals such as juniper berries, obviously, some ginger roots, rose petals, tea leaves, and grapefruit zest. The result is a delicious and versatile gin with a beautiful balance between the earthy and light notes. The indigo color comes from the infusion of butterfly peat tea after the distillation, and not only it gives the beautiful color to the gin, it also adds some earthy notes for the perfect balance. So if you want to know more about Empress, they have a beautiful website with tons of information and an amazing cocktail section. So I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. And if you want to grab a bottle for yourself for that as well, I'm going to leave a link in the show notes. So thank you very much Empress for sponsoring this episode. But now let's make the punch. So first, in your punch bowl, you're going to start with three mils or 20 small dashes of orange blossom water, your 150 mils of hibiscus, ginger and lemon cordial, your 225 ml of Earl Grey and cardamom infusion, 2 ounces or 60 ml of elderflower liqueur, and you're gonna finish with 300 ml of Empress Gin. At this point, we could simply cover it up and place it in the fridge until we're ready to drink it. And because we didn't use any citruses or anything that would oxidize, it will stay good and perfect for at least one month. But let's pretend we are ready to drink it. We need to add some ice to this punch and I highly recommend you use one big cube of clear ice for better control on the dilution. Even though punches are quite forgiving and are actually kind of meant to be a little more diluted than the regular cocktail, it's always good to have a little more control on them. If you want to know how to make clear ice, I'm going to leave a link 
up here. And then for the garnish, we're simply gonna add some thin slices of lemon. And there you have it, the flour and the snow. Now, let's give it a try. Mm. For me, this really tastes like Impress. It's a beautiful balance between two different worlds. On one side, it's light, bright, refreshing with some floral notes, and on the other side, it's rounded up and balanced by some hearty notes and a lot of spices. So it's very holiday-like, the color is super festive, I think it is the perfect punch recipe for Christmas parties, I love it, and I hope you're gonna love it too. So my friends, before I let you go, if you're looking for some Christmas gift ideas this year, well, Empress 1908 is always a great idea, and I also made a gift guide last year that is still pretty up to date, so I'm gonna link it up here. So my friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, to turn that bell if you wanna make sure not to miss the next one. And until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers. Drink responsibly.